Hey guys, welcome to the video on this deep learning tutorial. In this video here, we're going to see how we can set up Google Colab for stable diffusion with the, the firm Google Colab Notebook. Then we're going to see how we can actually create these really cool 3D animations, the frame interpolations with stable diffusion. So we can create these nice videos that I've uploaded on my channel here throughout the last week. But first of all, remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video. Only 10% of you guys watching these videos here are actually subscribed to the channel. It's just a single click and it helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. You can also become a member of the channel if you want to have some help in your own projects. So thank you guys. So this notebook here is actually created so you guys can play around with the stable diffusion model. You can create like video, you can create 2D images with uh, stable diffusion. You can create like 3D animations, uh, frame interpolations and all these different kind of stuff. So there's a lot of different kind of settings that we need to set up. I'll just walk you through that. And you also need to download the models and actually like uh, incorporate it into Google Drive. Then from there, we can actually like go through some of the settings and then I'll show you how you can create your own uh, animations and like 3d animations and also frame interlations so we can get these cool videos generated by ai so first of all we need to go into um hawk and face space so we need to download the model for the version 1.4 original stable diffusion model so basically you can just go in here i'll throw a link down in the description so you can just directly go down there you need to sign in first to act like be able to download these weights but this is the act like the weights file that you need so you just click here and then it will download the weights to your computer when you've downloaded that, we need to set up Google Drive. Um, so you need to go in here to your drive. So you go just go inside your home drive and then you just create a new folder. And then you basically just call that folder AI with capital A and capital I. And then you just um, then you just create that new folder. I also have already done that. So basically I'll just scroll down. So I have this folder called AI. And then you also need to create this models folder here with, with lowercase m or, and all the letters need to be lowercase. So you just create a new folder, which is called models. And then you don't need to create this stable diffusion. It will do that for you when you actually like generate the art and when you start to generate your animations and stuff like that. Because inside here, it will like, like this store all the images that is used to create these animations. It will also store your video files and the settings that you use to actually like create these really cool videos. So these are some of the examples from the previous videos I have act like done frame interpolation with. So here we can just have a sneak peek into this uh, video here that I created. So we actually like have interpolation between this frame here and another frame with a castle with a staircase and also covered by flowers. So here we can just see uh, the video here where we do is frame interpolation. The frames on and the images act like change from frame to frame. And then we can also access each of the individual frames uh, one by one here. So this is just a folder that it will create itself. But basically you just need to create AI and then models and then you just need to go in here and then you do you download the folder or like you download this uh, weights file SD version 1.4 to your own computer and then you just drag that into this models folder. It will then upload the, the, the weights here. It will take around like half an hour to one hour depend, de depending on like what is your internet speed and your upload speed. And then when you have actually like uploaded the weights here, you're, you're good to go. You can just directly go into the Google Colab notebook again. And then we can do the setup in here after that. So I've already done that. I have the weights files in my models folder in Google Drive. So here we can basically just go through the setup. First of all, we need to uh, start here. We need to set up the NVIDIA GPU. So we need to run this on the GPU. This also works on a free version of uh, Google Colab where you'll just get assigned uh, uh, a worse C uh, GPU, but it, it will still be really fast um, and, and so on. You have some like restricted like capacity or like runs on your GPU if you're using the free version. I'm using the pro version so I can do a lot of different kind of things, but you can still use this on the free version so you can start off with that. Then you can basically just throw in the model and output path. All of these setup settings here is actually like just uh, already set up for you. So the only thing you need to do is create these folders inside um, your Google Drive. And then you just use these default settings. And then you can create your animations um, a bit further down. So we have the model path. We have the output path for our act like images and stuff like that. So basically here we just run this blog of code and it will do all the setup for us. So now we need to connect to Google Drive here to act like access the Google Drive files and the weight files that we just uploaded to Google Drive. I just sound in, sign into my account and allow, um, I'll just allow this um, Google Colab folder or like this Google Colab notebook to access my Google Drive. Then it just does all the setup here. So then we'll just wait for this blog of code to finish. 
So now it has finished. We have mounted at my Google Drive. We have the model path and the output path uh, set up. Then we can go down and set up the environment. You can also go down here and show the code if you want to so see like all the code going on behind this setup and all these different kind of things when we're actually like calling the modules. But here we're just using all the basic stuff for the setup. We're basically just setting up the GPU, the model and this notebook with the folders in our Google Colab. So I'm just going to hide the code and then we're just going to set up the environment and run these blocks of code. Now we've set up the whole environment. It took around 90 seconds. Then we can go down, do some Python definitions, but then we go down, select the model and load some weights. So here we're both going to load the weights that we actually like uploaded to our um, to our Google Drive. We're going to select and load the model by just running this block of code. So now it's done setting up all the different kind of things that we need in this uh, the firm stable fusion google collab notebook and then we can go down to the act like settings of our animations and also uh, the videos that we're going to create so here we can see we have some different kind of animation modes so right now it's set to interpolation we can also choose none we can use 2d animation we can do 3d animations so we actually like can create some really nice um animation that is in 3d where we actually like do like rotation around the all three different kind of axes and also translation we can also have a video input we're going to cover like most of these steps here in other videos and this video here we're mainly going to focus on interpolation but we can also have a video input where we act like do animation based on a video that we throw into the model as well but here we're going to set interpolation we can choose the number uh, like the maximum frames that we want to uh, do interpolation of so this will depend on like how long do we want the video uh, to be and also how many frames do we actually like want to process for this animation that we're going to create. Let's, for example, say that we want to have like maximum frames of 300. And then when we're going to create our video, we want to have a video with 10 frames per second. And then when we actually like create a video, uh, which is 30 seconds long. So you need to like act like do that calculation before you create your animation. So you know, like what is the number of frames per second that I want? How many frames do I actually like want to generate in our animation? But this video here, we're just going to go with 30. So don't create too many and it just takes more time, the more frames that you want to act like do animation off. Then we can act like, uh, act like just use this warp border and then most of it would act like be just default parameters. When we're going to do interpolation, we won't really need to do these motion parameters. But when you do the motion parameters, um, you can act like do it in 2D and 3D and stuff like that. So you can act like create these moving parameters. So you can, for example, like rotate around one of the axes or like translate. So you create some kind of zoom effect. And to do that, you will basically just go in here and separate these by commas. And then the first number here will be uh, the keyframe. So let's say we go from keyframe. We don't do any translation in the X direction. Then from keyframe five, for example, we want to do um, positive translation in the x direction then we do that for like for example two frames so then we separate it by a comma and then we just go to frame keyframe seven and then we want to set that to equal to zero again so this is basically how you, you do or like define the movement parameters or like the motion parameters but i'll cover that in another video where we're going to create some 3d um, 3d animations but then basically we, we don't have any translation until keyframe five then we have uh, translation from keyframe five till key keyframe seven so then you can actually like create these really cool motions inside of your animations but we're not going to cover that for now we can do both do it for all the different kind of directions depending on if you're doing 2d animations or 3d animations and then we can also rotate around each of these individual axes we can also set some noise scheduling strength scheduling and contrast scheduling um, i haven't really like played around with these parameters here a lot we can also set some 3D depth warping if we want to have like 3D animations, like create some like kind of like 3D animations that are rotating around and all these different kind of like cool stuff. Then it's actually like using the Midas um, depth animation neural network, which we've covered in this uh, on this channel here as well, where we actually like use this neural network where we have an image, we just pass it into the model and then we get a depth map out. Then we can actually like use this information together with our stable diffusion model to create this 3D depth warping in our images. We can set the weight here of the middle model. We can set the fill of view as well. We can also have some padding mode and sampling mode and, and stuff like that. But we just use the depth warping here by ch checking this um, box. We can have the video input and then we have some interpolation down here at the frames. So here we actually need to specify if we want to like interpolate between the keyframes. 
And if we don't want to do that, we can actually set the number of interpolations between our frames. So actually, like if we just have like, for example, like said, let's say two frames and we just want to interpolate between those two frames, we just check off this. And if we don't want that, we can actually like specify the number of frames that we actually like want to interpolate between. So the number of interpolations between our um, individual frames. And then down here, if we have act like if it terminates your notebook, you can resume an animation by this time frame, which will be in the settings file that I showed you in the Google Drive. But I will cover that in another video how you can act like resume your Google Colab if it disconnected at some point while um, trying to generate this um, trying to generate this um, AI generated um, video or animation. Then we can set up the different kind of prompts here. I'm just going to run this blog of code here, make sure that everything is set up correctly. Then we just run this blog of code. It does all the settings for the motion parameters. Then we can specify the different kind of prompts that we want to generate as well. So here we can basically just see that it uses these prompt here um, if the animation mode is set to none. So we're basically just generating images with stable diffusion. If our animation mode is set to 2D, uh, we actually like use these animation prompts or in for interpolation or the 3D animations, it uses these prompts with the animation prompts. So first of all, we have our first first uh, frame here, here and then we want to interpolate from this prompt to this prompt so the first prompt is a staircase to a treehouse covered in flowers high details vivid color training on our station and then we want to interpolate from that one to a staircase to a castle covered in flowers high details will vivid color training on our station so we basically just want to go from a treehouse covered in flowers to a castle covered in flowers and we want to keep this staircase and the flowers colors and so on as well so we're just going to run, run this blog of code and now we have actually like set up the prompts. Then we can go down to the run here, which can specify the image settings. The sampling here, you don't really need to choose the sampler. You can just go with the default one or if you want to play around with these settings, you can do that as well. But the default one works pretty good. We can also set the bat size down here at the bottom, the grid rows and so on. We can also set an in, in, in it image, but we're not using that as default. So if you want to initialize it with some image that you want to do, like for example, interpolation from to another image, you can also use like both an initial image. You can use a mask or like an inverted mask, but we don't want to do that in this video here. Here, we just want to use this sampler and specify the image settings as well. So the larger dimensions of your image, um, the, le the longer it will take to actually like run this um, sampler here or like generate these images. So here we can see that it is saving the animation frames to mark Google Drive, which I also showed you in the start of the video. And then we can see that it's preparing for interpolation of the following. And then here we can see that I have around like 2.8 iteration, uh, iterations per second because I have the pro account. It will take a bit longer if you're on the free account. But here we can basically just see it does all of the interpolation between the frames. And we can also see like how long is it uh, actually like in that process. And then it will just do it for all the different kind of images. So we chose around, I think it was 30 images that we chose. So it will do this for 30 images. It will save it in the Google Drive. And then down here at the bottom after the finished uh, generating all the images and also doing like the, like for example the animations if you have chosen to like do some translation or rotation it will also show it in the images down here at the bottom so here it just generated the first image now it's generating the second image let's just see the second image or like the output from the second image here uh, as well and then we'll just let it run and then after we've generated all the frames we can actually like go in and create a video based on those frames with the number of frames per second that we specify. So this is another one here. We're just going to interpolate from this house here to a castle um, from the number of frames that we generate. Then after we're done running that, we can actually just go down, run the blog of code here. We can choose the number of frames per second that we want. So here we're just going to choose three so we can actually see what is going on and it will just go slow. There will be a lot of changes in the image because we only like interpolate from one frame or like one image to the other image with 30 uh, frames. And then we just choose three frames per second. So we'll get a video uh, of 10 seconds. So we can actually like, see what is going on. It doesn't go too far. Like if we, for example, like create 300 frames of interpolation between uh, one frame and the other, then you might actually like, have high, higher FPS here. Like for example, uh, 10, 15, 30, maybe depending on like how fast do you want your animation to uh, to run so here we can basically just specify the number of frames per second and then we just hit this um, play button here so skip video for, for run all you need to uncheck this box and then it, it will act like create this video here from the AI generated frames of your prompts so then after that you basically just run this blog of code 
and it will then save your video. It will show a preview of the video down here at the bottom and it will also save the video file inside your Google Drive as I showed you in the start of the video. So now it's done generating these 30 frames here and interpolating between these two prompts. And we've also run this uh, create video from frames uh, code, code block here. So now we actually have the output. So it basically just like merges all the frames that we have generated with our prompts. And then we just specify the number of frames per seconds. Again, we have 30 frames, we have three frames per second. So we're going to create a video with 10 seconds. You can actually like have more interpolation steps in between if you just choose a higher number of frames that you actually like want to interpolate between. So here we're just going to play the video and see the results. So here we can see that we have this tree house with a staircase, which we're converting to a castle with a staircase. So we still have the staircase here. We have a castle, some kind of like around here. So this is actually like a pretty nice interpolation. We have these really nice colors with the flowers. So we actually like see we still have the same flowers. We still have some, some kind of the same staircase, which is actually just converted and interpolated. And then we have a lot more like this castle scene at the end. So this is basically like a castle with a staircase instead of like a staircase up to a castle, which is the case with the treehouse. So this is really cool. We just get some really crazy results by by looking at these videos here and just trying to like play around with them. You can throw in your own prompts, try to come up with your like try to just come up with your imagination, like try to try out different kind of things. You can create these really nice interpolations and animations as I've always also uploaded to the YouTube channel. You can check it out. And you can also go inside your drive and then it will also contain these videos and all the generated AI images. So if you just go inside Stable Fusion, we go inside this folder, stable.fun. Then we will actually get the outputs here as well. So we get each of the individual frames. So we can see all the 30 frames here. So this is the first frame that we have generated. And then we can just scroll up, see all the interpolation steps. And then we can see the last image here at the end. We we'll also get this settings file here that we can play around with, see some different kind of things in between. So we can see our uh, motion uh, motion settings. We can see like how many frames are we actually like, generating. We can also see our time string and so on. If our notebook here has actually like, terminated, which I'm going to cover in another video. And we can also see the MP4 or the video file here that we generated. So this is exactly the same as the preview that we got in the Google Colab notebook and then you can basically just go in here and you can download it as well from google drive if you want to share it or send it to someone else so this is pretty cool we can use this for a lot of different kind of things this is just crazy that we can do this with ai now so now we went from like generating images with a prompt to the actual like do interpolation between images and then we can create like 2d and 3d animations as well where we can define our own movements and actually like create some really nice videos so thank you guys for watching this video here. And again, remember to subscribe button and bell notification under the video. Also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. I'm definitely going to cover way more about stable diffusion models, how we can generate these like AI generated art, how we can create like interpolations, 3D animations. I'm going to show you a lot of cool settings and some cool videos that I've generated with these prompts. So if you're interested in that, definitely stay in touch. And then I'll just see you next video, guys. Bye for now.